um, will be Dennis Debo, Dr. Melissa Srekovic, I'm very sorry if I'm pronouncing uh, names wrongly, and Dr. Christine Kennedy. And they're going to speak about hand in glove policy change with command level police, police and, and legislators. So Dennis Debo is an independent investigative, investigative researcher, author, and parent of an autistic adult son. His work has focused on the interactions between police and autistic people since 1991. Debo has reported on, his, on this subject matter for the FBI Law Enforcement Bulletin, International Associ Association of Chiefs of Police, Unis Riva Center, Journal of Health Care Protection and Management, and Jessica Kingsley, Springer and Woodbryan House Publishers. He presents training for police in the US, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. Alongside, uh, alongside him, we have Dr. Melissa Srekovic is an associate professor in education at the University of Michigan Flint. Her research centralizes on improving outcomes for autistic individuals through identifying best practices to promote authentic inclusion of autistic individuals in schools and communities, examining the efficacy, that's a word I find difficult, sorry, of interventions for individuals on the spectrum and translating research to practice to support autistics, educators, service providers, and community members. Dr. Christine Kennedy is an associate professor in education at the University of Michigan Flink. She conducts two strands of research, the first focusing on inclusive practices for individuals with disabilities, and the second centers on adult learning strategies. So thank you so much, uh, all three of you, for being here with us today. I will now hand over to you. Thank you so much, Charlotte. We really appreciate us. Thank, and thank that you for was having a great me. last name. You did great on that, Charlotte. It's thank you. I'm really list. sorry. It was perfect. <laughs> I'm Danish. I'll use that as an excuse. <laughs> so hello and welcome to our session called ASD and Policing, Working Hand in Glove for Change. So as Charlotte uh, introduced us, Melissa and I are professors and former classroom teachers in the United States where we worked with um, many different um, individuals, um, some with autism and other disabilities. We are very interested in supporting the students we used to teach who are actually now adults. So that's uh, aging us a bit. Um, they're adults living in the world um, and, as, and we wanna support them as they engage with society. This led us to connect with Dennis. Um, and as Charlotte said, Dennis is a former private investigator who has worked at the intersection of autism and law enforcement for over 30 years and trains law enforcement officers all over the United States. He is also the proud father of an autistic son named Brad. Today, as we talk, we will use both person first language and identity first language, identity first language um, and we recognize that person-centered language is critical and preferred. And we also really appreciate the conversation that Charlotte and Nathan just discussed about having society as a whole act in a way that all the individuals can live where labels will become decreasingly um, needed. So that's obviously a long-term a, a long -term goal that we hope we reach sooner rather than later. Before we begin though, we would like to take the opportunity to apologize to anyone who attended our session yesterday and found the content disturbing. We agree the content was and is disturbing and we should have given a stronger content warning in the beginning of the se session. And for that, we are sincere, we sincerely apologize. We do believe it is crucial that law enforcement officers and the community see how quickly a safety encounter can escalate so that they can better respond and advocate for change. And today our session is all about advocating for change. We do not show any videos today, but we will discuss broadly some difficult situations that have occurred with the goal to raise awareness and urge the necessity for a collaborative approach for change. Um, and yes, as Nathan and Charlotte said, we are very, very happy to be here today with you. So let's get started. In today's session, we will first discuss three interactions between autistic individuals and law enforcement officers that have led to changes in policy and law in the United States. Then we will discuss three bills that have been brought for, forward in the United States, all centered on increasing the safety of autistic individuals during interactions with law enforcement officers. And finally, we will present ideas looking forward for continued change. So first we will talk about interactions that have led to changes in policy and law specifically in the United States. 
We want to take a moment to share a very important policy change that recently happened in the uh, state of Michigan, which is where Melissa and I live. Um, Xavier DeGroat, who started the Xavier DeGroat Foundation, successfully advocated for two key pieces of legislation to be passed. Uh, Mr. DeGroat was pulled over in a routine traffic stop while he was driving. He has shared in his story that he was anxious during the traffic stop, which I completely understand because I often am anxious if I ever am pulled over, which doesn't happen often, but if it does, I do become anxious. And he has shared that he had a difficult time answering the questions posed by the officer. Following the traffic stop, Mr. DeGroat shared that he wished there was a way he could have alerted officers at the very beginning of the stop that he was on the autism spectrum and prefers additional time for processing and responding during conversations. So this experience led Xavier and his foundation to fight for a voluntary disclosure program. He lobbied for two Senate bills, which were passed unanimously, that allow individuals in Michigan to voluntarily self-disclose autism or other communication disorders, which is then linked electronically to their license plate, driver's license, or state-issued ID. Again, this is a voluntary system for those who are interested as disclosure of autism or any uh, other disability should be up to the person. Policy like this varies across the United States and every state does not have a voluntary disclosure system in place, but we're pleased to see that um, some states are starting to have this type of identification system if the individual desires. In addition, Xavier DeGroat started a program for engaging law enforcement officers. And on the previous slide, Melissa, if you would go back just one, you can see uh, a photo of him. Sorry, I, she wasn't planning on, on that one. You can see a, a, a photo of Xavier along with individuals that he worked with um, on the law. So in the next example, I'm going to talk about a situation that led to use of force. I'm not going to show a video, but I did want to give an advance warning that I will talk about um, a situation where force was used. So this is a picture of Rajon Cherry. He is autistic and he resides in Georgia. Approximately eight months ago, the Glen County Police Department responded to a call involving Rajon. The reporting person said that there was a suspicious person with a weapon, and the reporting person said that he was, quote, flipping out, end quote. During the interaction, Rajan was tased six times within 10 minutes. When the family members arrived on scene, they were yelling to the officers that Rajan was autistic, but the actions of the officers did not appear to change. The weapon that Rajan was holding turned out not to be a weapon at all, but rather his favorite spoon. Rajan's mother has been in the media fighting for change. She's trying to have her voice heard so that this doesn't happen to anyone else. And her voice is being heard. As a direct result of this incident with Rajan, the Glen County Police Department created a voluntary information sharing program at the emergency call center. It's a voluntary program that allows identifying medical and other needs of persons they encounter who have autism or dementia or other needs more quickly. All officers are also now mandated to complete an autism awareness and de-escalation de training. Yeah, Mike Fitzpatrick. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks to be part of the team here. And, uh, and it's a privilege and an honor to be here with you today. Mike Fitzpatrick in 1999 falsely confessed to bank robbery uh, after a couple of uh, uh, banks were robbed in his region of uh, Northern New York. Mike, whose habit was visiting banks to just uh, as a place to see the architecture, he would he has an independence level, allows him to drive. He, he was working at that time. And he visited a bank in an area where there was a recent uh, robbery of a bank. Uh, long story short, law enforcement were alerted by police guard, uh, 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 security guards at the bank that there was an unusual person in the bank looking around and uh, they went out and jotted down his plate number. Uh, police uh, 
uh, discovered where uh, Mike lived and where he worked and decided that on the possibility that he was a bank robber, they would do uh, a contact at his place of work, uh, unannounced. And when they did, Mike's supervisor clearly stated to the police at that time that Mike was autistic and that uh, he felt that Mike couldn't absolutely not be responsible for a bank robbery. But nonetheless, uh, actions were taken. Mike was escorted to the uh, local police station where questioning and interrogation techniques were used to the strength uh, of this uh, trickery and deceit, uh, Mike ultimately uh, confessed to robbing the bank uh, with the belief that you know, he would now be able to go home back to his family and, and life would uh, move on, but it didn't move on. Uh, ultimately, his photograph was shared with uh, witnesses to uh, robberies in the region, specifically the one uh, near uh, the bank he entered. And the teller picked his photograph out. Uh, Mom was his only alibi witness. Uh, ultimately, Mike was uh, who had falsely confessed. Now, uh, the, the confession was taken at face value. Uh, the prosecutor issued a warrant for his arrest, and he faced over 25 years for bank robbery. It was only uh, it was only until the real robber stepped up and did the right thing. Uh, and he uh, took credit for that, the robbery that Mike had already been charged with and it hit the newspaper, his family had to pay for a defense attorney and all the scrutiny of Mike that went on for months, finally was resolved, but, but not before all the trauma and grief that could have been avoided at that time. The, the, when disclosure is made, it has to have value to everyone, not only the person who discloses, but to the person that's receiving that. And in this case, uh, back in 1999, it, whether or not they took his autism into consideration is unknown, but it sure didn't look that way as a result. Now, take Mike Fitzpatrick's case and move it up 17 years later, uh, this uh, Mike's case was part of a palette of uh, facts and uh, prior incidents that uh, went into the passage of the West Kleiner Autism and Fair Interview Act here in Florida. It, it only affects the state of Florida, but uh, it, it's sitting here as an example to all the other states, as well as our federal government, uh, into uh, what kind of accommodations we can provide folks you know, during interview or processing by police, the, the entry point into the criminal justice system oftentimes. Uh, and Florida passed a law that requires now in, in the state of Florida, uh, a couple of things. Uh, uh, it, very similar to uh, Xavier's uh, uh, zeal and terrific advocacy here in Florida, the Department of uh, um, Motor Vehicles uh, also will uh, allow people to volunteer uh, diagnostic information and then have their driver's license uh, 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 presented. So if law enforcement pulled you over, ran your driver's license, that would be a primary disclosure. And then law enforcement with training uh, can uh, respond better and at least accommodate that person for uh, investing more time and, uh, and, and having a, a better level of communication. Uh, the second part of the West Kleinert Act that's relative to Mike Fitzpatrick is that police in Florida now are required once they know that the victim or the suspect uh, is autistic, they're required to uh, alert them that they can have uh, a, an autism expert uh, and if they choose. And they, uh, through good faith effort, will help find that person. Florida is a big place, a lot of rural uh, areas where finding uh, an appropriate specialist to sit in on a, an interview when requested may be difficult. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the, the law does require that someone with 
uh, a specialized background and there they offer a variety of uh, uh, of parameters about who would fit that bill can be brought in to observe and or help improve communications uh, during the interview. It, law enforcement is not required to pay for it, uh, for the uh, expert, uh, their time and, uh, uh, and, and whatever their consulting may cost, uh, but they uh, do need to allow that process to take place. And that would be for a, vic for a, uh, a suspect, for a victim, the cost would then be borne on anyone found guilty of the crime against that individual. So we, it was through a partnership. It was through sticking with uh, working with police and developing a hand in glove uh, relationships uh, that th this law uh, came to pass. So it's reasonably fresh, but it, it also reflects current national legislation uh, that is in the works uh, in Washington, D.C. And there's three acts. They're, they're all sponsored by Senator Bob Casey. Uh, it's uh, the, the first one is the Safe Interactions Act, which will authorize ongoing training for new and veteran law enforcement uh, professionals and other first responders on how to communicate, engage, de-escalate, and respond to people uh, on the spectrum or with other ND or other disabilities and, and, and give them a better shot at, at making a better judgment in the time that they are given now that this person may have a disability and then it opens the doors to a, a wider array of uh, generic or person specific information that you can use to uh, make the contact safer, more fair uh, and uh, you know avoid uh, a lot of misinformation Interpretation. So the Safe uh, Interactions Act would also include funding uh, between that can be shared with law enforcement and nonprofit agencies working hand in glove to uh, fund those efforts in all, all of the states around America. So that's one. Uh, a second one that uh, could really be, uh, uh, and I hate using the word game changer, but I just used it. So there you go. Uh, the Dial Act would be legislation to improve on the uniform uh, crime reporting program that has been in existence and run by our uh, Department of Justice and the FBI since 1930. In this case, it would uh, offer an opportunity through the reporting of crime in contact with police. All 18,000 will have the access to this. A box to check if uh, disability is uh, present in the, in the victim or the subject or even a witness potentially, uh, as well as being able to identify which disability. And the FBI reports each year on data collected from prior years to report on trends of contact uh, and in not only in contact with police, but uh, when people are victimized or people uh, commit crime, uh, it, it forms a, 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 a very strong database that researchers can then rely on to get a real sense about how many of these contacts are there and what were the results uh, through, through the reporting. So this has a lot of potential, as does the HELP Act. The HELP Act would create a 988 national alternative for uh, 911 calls. It would be implemented for mental health sub substance uh, abuse crisis and, and hopefully head them off be, before they turn into an emergency crisis where uh, uh, they, they may become uh, aggressive or assaultive and then uh, 911 or the police would be uh, brought in. But in, in the interim, if this law passes and we pray and hope and we'll work hard to see that it does, it would form a buffer 